would be, I was asked to, to give a, 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 a tutorial talk on, on, on things in polygenetics, and this is, um, this is sort of my regular talk here, although not necessarily, but uh, I'll even add some uh, recent uh, interesting results that arose here in the, in the, in the first, uh, in the first uh, short course uh, last week. So um, the title is Using Small Trees to Construct the Big Tree of Life. And I'm happy that we have all the, all the uh, rectangles here working. So uh, yeah, because I did not fix my talk to um, rotten rectangles. Anyway, so let's see. So what is a phylogeny? So it represents the evolutionary history of the organisms that are mapped to the organisms are mapped to the leaves of the tree and internal nodes represent extinct species or speciation events and um, the branches represent the relationship, okay? So who is a sister of who um, and so forth. Now the talk outline is super tree construction, the basics of it. Okay, of super tree, <laughs> then rooted super tree, which is Lucas versus Max cat, um, unrooted super tree, the quartet Max cat. Then I will, from this point, I will try, I will start to specialize on quartet, and I'll um, revive, I review some theoretical results that we've been developing for like uh, 10 and more years. And back to biology, and if time permits, I will speak about three distances <coughs> that is very uh, topical now, um, as you might be, you might have experienced. And I will conclude, and no technical details. So this is, but we start with some really um, uh, exposition <coughs> of the super tree uh, realm, and now. Probably you guys ran into this uh, uh, task of phylogenetics, or any, uh, and even if it is done now automatically, so when we analyze by, by Blastal or Blast or whatever, we analyze sequences, and these sequences are assumed to be homologous or autologous, or even autologous, so this is gene A that is uh, uh, common to all these organisms, so we built phylogeny, so this is the most classical uh, 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 situation for phylogenetics, but sometimes we don't have this gene to every, uh, every all organisms, okay? For instance, here we have gene A only to these three guys, but gene B to the other guys, okay? So what we can do is we can build Okay, uh, uh, the history for this gene and the history for this gene and amalgamate that. And that actually explains to you all the idea about super tree. So data can come from different sources such as morphological, molecular, behavioral. And what we want to do is to use all these data together and build some big tree from all these small or partial pieces. Not necessarily small, but, but partial. Okay? So this is the super tree ta task that aims to combine um, all these trees, um, overlapping species, into one big tree of um, the entire set of species. Okay, so this is uh, uh, some uh, pictorious uh, examples. We have some trees of a fish, some trees over um, uh, primates, and some, some combined tree, and we just combine them all together for this tree, and this, this arrow that you see here is mathematical, so it is well-defined mathematically, that these trees really yield that tree here. Okay, so rooted versus unrooted. So in the rooted setting, this is this is the, the way that we see the tree, and this is very it should be familiar, very familiar to all of you. Okay, and um, here um, the least common ancestor is the 
piece of information or, or the information here, and the basic reconstruction unit is a rooted triplet, okay? Now, here that I assume you also saw uh, in the past such trees, okay, that represent, for instance, uh, 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 bacterial evolution where we don't really know who is the ancestor of whom, so this is unrooted setting, we don't have the time notion here, and the trees are represented by splits, and here the piece of information, the bit of information is an unrooted cortex. So, um, let's see what is the underlying super tree approach. We have these guys, we start with the rooted setting that is more straightforward. So you see rooted trees and we combine them or, or we first decompose them to the most basic pieces, which are rooted triplets, as I just said. And now we combine all these rooted triplets into one big tree, which is this, okay? So like I said, all these arrows are, and these operations are well defined, okay? So it is, it is easy to mathematically or, or, or algorithmically define every step that we did here. So, um, okay, so, and surprisingly, really surprisingly, for the rooted triplet, it was found, okay, that actually some algorithm that came from database theory solved that problem. It, 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 it appeared, and, and actually, I mean, even I was challenged with this, this task, and I, I, and I was wondering, well, it's, it's very natural, but then I found in some paper in polygenetics that actually they, they point to this AHO et al. Um, algorithm from H1 in database theory, and it's very, very nice and elegant, and it works recursively by a divide and conquer approach. Let's have a look. So it constructs a connectivity graph over the set of taxa, okay, the set of organisms, and partition it recursively and builds simultaneously the tree. Let's have a look. So these are the guys, okay? These are the guys, and we will now construct the connectivity graph. Have a look. So we have this triplet. This is the information, okay? This is the piece of information. So we just join these guys on the other graph, on the connectivity graph, by one edge, okay? This is that edge. Now another triplet, another piece of information. So we connect the two other fish by an edge. And let's see some more still yet uh, uh, toy examples, but more uh, concrete, okay, not just uh, pictures. So we have these guys, uh, the one to six uh, taxa or element set, and we have these triplets, okay? And now we go triplet by triplet, okay? So first we construct the connectivity graph, okay? So these are the guys. And we construct, now we go a triplet by triplet. Let's start with this one, okay? The one, two versus three. So we join one and two. We join two and three. Now four and one, one and three, and six and five. Now let's have a look what we have here. We have this connectivity graph with two components, okay? So we just, partition our species set, our element set, we partition it into two, okay? To every component that, that was produced, okay? And we forgot everything that we saw until now. So we, and we introduce a new tree node. We build the tree while we decompose the triplet set, okay? So this is the tree node, U, and it is over this sub-problem, okay? So let's see how we continue now. So we continue, we apply the algorithm recursively for every component, okay, of G. Let's see how it really works, okay? So here on this side, we just hang five and six because we have no information here. Have a look, no information. So we just hang them, but here we can, recurse, 
with our algorithm. So this is the recursion, again, the connectivity graph, and um, uh, 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 remote, maybe so. There is some that I can go to the. Uh, never mind, never mind, Sam. So it will be okay. It will be okay. Okay, but, but so, so we have these one, two, three, and four. And now go, let's go over the triplets. One and two, we connect one. So I will say you can use the mouse. The mouse, but this, yeah, I don't know. It's okay. It will be okay. So we, we, now we connect one and two. And now two and three. I hope you see why two and three, because of this triplet. Two and three, so we, we connect them. And now, so we have two components. You see two components, four versus all the rest. So we have four here. This is the other three node. And, and here we, we just, and again, recursively apply here, one and two with the system back stuff. And this is the entire tree. Now it's my computer. I should have, I should have had working. Okay, so this is it. This is the entire tree. Okay, this is the entire tree. That this is the AHO algorithm that solved all this problem. Okay, so these you can say that these triplets give rise to this tree. Okay, so um, let's continue. Life is not so simple. Maximum triplet consistency. In many cases, triplets are incompatible, and in biology, it will, it's not many cases, it is always. Always, and we will get why, because it's really very nice uh, 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 processes in biology that makes everything complicated. And, and the, for instance, these guys are incompatible. Let's have a look, one and two, okay, with, from triplets from the left, one and two, now the, in the middle triplet, three and two, and four and two, one component. We cannot decompose these guys, one component. And it's easy to, to see also uh, topologically that these guys form some uh, form of a circle, so they are incompatible. And the mean triplet uh, consistency find some tree that violates, okay, violates uh, the least number of triplets or, or, or satisfies the most number of triplets. So this is the uh, maximum triplet consistency. Okay, it is hard problem, naturally. Um, like it is said, there are, all, there are only seven problems in computer science that are polynomial. So, uh, and then I don't remember which of them, maybe, uh, spanning tree and, uh, and max flow. Um, anyway, so what is the heuristic? And now why do, there is a heuristic? And, and we'll see why do I, 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 when I, uh, in my PhD, I, my, I was assigned this task uh, by, by uh, my advisor. And, and, uh, um, and I, I, I asked him, I still hear, hey, why is this uh, heuristic here? And he said, actually, for me, from, from algorithms, it, it looks like, why such, why heuristic? And, and in biology, you must have something that, that works, okay? You cannot just sit and say, hey, I can't, I can't solve this. So you must have something that works. Now, but the heuristic here is really, really nice. It is based on the observation of every edge in the connectivity graph represents a triplet. You remember, every triplet, we moved one triplet and added uh, 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 an edge to the connectivity graph. So the idea is to run the algorithm. Once we get stuck in one big component, okay, in one, uh, 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 a single component, we compute a mean cut. We want, we must cut that graph to continue the recursion, and that mean cut which is polynomial, <laughs> which is polynomial. But one of the seven problems that is polynomial, that means that we violate the minimum number of triplets, okay? So we partition the leaves accordingly to the, to the cut, and we continue with the recursive algorithm. 
So uh, let's have a look. Uh, the main tank is local in its view. Um, I would uh, let me. Uh, this is some some observation that as a student, some of you had. I said, hey, it's it's local. You know, it's it's who said that this approach is is really solve something, and counts only violated triple. And let's let's consider this this scenario. So this is the this is our input, and let me do for you the work and 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 tell you that this is the resulted connectivity graph. Okay, and you see it is connected, meaning the triplets are inconsistent. There will not there is no single tree that satisfies all of them because of one component. So let's run some mean cut here. And let me do the mean cut for you because every cut, or not every, but many cuts you have are minimal, but let me do the, the, the cut for you. Okay, so we run the cut that cuts, that separates one from all the others. So this is the mean cut. And this gives us, um, this violates this uh, uh, triplet on the left. Another mean cut. Um, violates the, the, the other triplet or the next triplet from the left. Still we have a connected graph. And this one, and these two, every two triplets agree. So we have, so, okay. So let's see what we have here. So we separated one. This is the resulted tree. We separated one. We separated three. We separated two. And these guys just agree on this. They, there is no real information here. So this is the this is the tree. We, we violated three triplets out of five. Okay. Now consider this idea. So this is this is um, already with with Satish Rao from Berkeley in my in my postdoc. I, I came to him with this idea and I told him that something like that. Hey Satish, let's <laughs> again it's that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that. Okay, and I told him something like that. At every step, when the algorithm is stuck, some triplets are violated, but some are also satisfied. Let's try to do something about these guys. Okay, so not only consider how to minimize the number of violated triplets, but also to satisfy the most. So. For triplet i, j, k, like we saw, denote that these guys are bad, that we don't want to cut them, like the mean cut. But we also have two new good edges, i and k and j and k, okay? From i to k and from j to k. And so this is the original uh, uh, AHO connectivity graph, or, or still, no, AHO connectivity graph, but we add the good edges. So all these good edges, okay? And now the observation is this. Every triplet of the six that you, of the five that you see above, that the bad edge is not, is not cut, but any of the good edges of that triplet is cut, this triplet is satisfied, okay? And, wow, <laughs> that's bad. Yeah, it occurs too much. Let me try, there is something about me. Um, Okay, now it is this. Okay, so now this is the observation. And so we the idea is to find a cut that maximizes the ratio between blue and red. And actually, if you see, if you look here, it's really straightforward. And I used this example for so many years. Maybe when I came to Satish, I came to him is this very convincing toy example. But it's really easy to see that. Maybe you can tell me, how would you cut the graph? Now when you, when you see 
see the, the blue and red edges? Anyone has an idea? How would you cut the graph to maximize the blue edges and minimize the red edges? Oh, how many Let cuts do we get? What? How many cuts do we get? We want oh, how many cuts? Oh, many, many cuts. Actually, you have two to the number of uh, <laughs> two to the number of of of, of, um, of vertices. This is the number of cuts. But um, but uh, so this is the edge. Okay, so it it cuts only one red edge that you must have, and it cuts almost all the blue edges. Okay, almost all the blue edges. And this is the and so we violate one only one triplet, and we satisfy in one like a sword <laughs> all the other rest four, and that's it. So. This is the max cut idea, okay? So, but how we actually solve that? This is again, so, okay. So, for mean cut, great, great idea, and polynomial time. Here we have, this is formally the, 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 the criterion we try to do, okay? Guys, you support me. So, this is the criterion, but this is a hard problem, okay? So, we have exact, when I say exact, this is approximation, so it's not even, it's not even an, an, it's an exact approximation. It's not really like the real solution. Max cut is a hard problem, it's among the classical hard problems, and we have, for a heuristic, we have an NP-hard problem. So what we do, this is some heuristic that is based on some definite programming that is used to solve uh, a max cut, and we just, let's describe it more pictorially on the next slide. So we just locate, we have this graph, and we locate the vertices on a sphere here, and we move the points on the, on the sphere, okay, these points, we move them on the sphere to optimize or to maximize the length of the blue edges and the minimize the red edges. So you see the red edges are quite short here, except for this one, but all the blue edges are very long. Now, if we run a random cut or a random hyperplane on this sphere, okay, it will, with hypermobility, give us the partition that we wanted here. So let's have a look. Random cut through the origin, something like that. Okay, so it yielded the cut that we looked for. Okay, separating one, two, and three, exactly like here. One, two, and three are separated from, from um, five, six, and four. So this is the idea, and 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 the next goal is really, and, and this I don't want to spend time on, 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 on slides for this, but the next goal is really to see how it works in practice. And we implemented that. Uh, we wrote some code for Max Cut that, that does that, or actually uh, Satish wrote some code, and we implemented the recursive algorithm, and compare it to, uh, to mean cut. And, and I removed the slides in order to advance faster, I removed the slides, but it is like mean cut is, a run, is like a random tree performance and the, the max cut was really, really nice, like, like really optimizing the, the, the function. And the function is, is um, uh, uh, um, maximum triplet consistency, but the hardest, uh, the harder task is to deal with unrooted trees, and unrooted trees uh, go like that. So here there is not any information. Two and three versus one you don't have here any information. While here, have a look on a quartet. 
here one and two you can say one and two are separated topologically separated from three and four okay one and two separated from three and four here you cannot say anything it is too little or too small piece of an information to say something here you have one more element that gives you the information okay and it says that one and two in the big tree are separated from three and four so what can we do with codex so actually almost everything almost more and more now it's less but we find um application to cortex in in gene phylogeny in species phylogeny everything decomposes into cortex because this is the most basic site a bit in information okay everything can be decomposed into cortex okay so cortex amalgamation stands at the heart of almost any phylogenetic task so from triplets to cortex now we don't even have the divide and conquer the AO algorithm does not even work here and there is no wonder and i will get to it why there is no wonder but this is a hard task in general and hard of course and cortex introduced non-trivial obstacles to work with working with cuts because the cut here is even the maximum cut is a hard um and what are the results the results that we achieved and I, I go over several uh, results of your, of our paper, are the following. So we extended the connectivity graph to the quartet graph, G of Q. It's a graph that represents our set of quartets. And we adapted the algorithm, the AHO algorithm, to deal with um, this graph, a divide and conquer algorithm for this graph. And, and, and we can say something about this, this, uh, this algorithm, um, but again, every, every task here is hard and hard, um, unlike the triplet case. So what is the extension? So um, now this is how we build the quartet graph. So we have these guys, and we see that one and two are sister taxa, and also three and four. We don't, from this quartet, we don't want to divide one from two and three from four. So these are the same edges, the two red edges, and but we do want to divide one from three and one from four, so these are the good edges that we want to cut, the good edges that we want to cut. Okay, so we assign plus one to the good edges that we want to cut. In the max cut, we want these edges to be counted, and these guys we don't want to cut. Okay, this is minus alpha, and this is this minus alpha is exactly in this adaptation to the recursive algorithm which alpha it will be everything is determined dynamically and like i said the maximum cut will strive to put cherries together and separate between non-sister taxa now this is the quartet graph okay this this is one quartet another quartet this is the entire quartet graph And this is the recursive algorithm. So a triplet, I go back to triplet, a triplet is either violated, in this case that one is not with its sister, rather with three. One, sorry, one is separated from two and three. It's a violation. And this is satisfied. Okay, this is how uh, we satisfy one is with two, but with quartet we have that the quartet is either violated 
Okay, this way it is violated. Oh, sorry. It is either vi violated or satisfied or deferred. This is deferred. One is separated. So we don't yet violate this quartet, but it is deferred. So one goes to one side, these guys go to the other side, and we need to keep track of this quartet. So the challenge is how to cope with this deferred quartet and using some algorithmic techniques we could show that if all cuts, if all cuts are found correctly in this quartet graph, the tree, the correct tree is returned. Okay, so it is quite heavy to explain all these things here, but it's some adaptation of us to the um, AO algorithm with, or with uh, respect to um, cortex. So I want now really, so this was more the tutorial to give you the sense, and I want now to speak a little bit on Siri. And the thing here is the following. So everywhere that we go in biology, with quartets, and it is like, so I have a student that he was here in the past two um, workshops, CTSI workshop, that, and he found some barriers of horizontal gene transfer, horizontal gene transfer between archaea and bacteria, and he found that just by using quartets, okay? So, and some quartet graph and some quartet probability, he called it the quartet um, plurality distribution. So everywhere we go with quartets, eventually, uh, in biology, eventually it boils to some theoretical question, deep theoretical question with quartets, and, and it motivates us to, to really um, lay the, the theoretical um, ground for the quartet. So let's see the following. So MQC is maximum quartet compatibility. It's empty hard. And this is why, and it is found by Mike Steele like 30 years back, okay? Like Mike Steele, uh, he was here in iPhone, and, and, but uh, he found that 20 years before. Um, it's MP hard. It was a big finding that actually yields all the all the sub results that we see that there is no AO algorithm for cortex because the cortex are hard even if they are if even if they agree within each other. Okay, so except for the normal algorithm exists for very special cases, but and this is very strong, but. The best approximation when you just get a bunch of quartets, just a random tree, like, like flipping a coin, like flipping a coin, not any information gives you the best result, which is really bad situation. Okay, and remember that third, and that actually can be shown that this is gives you a Random tree gives you an approximation of a third. Now there was one single result, rigorous result, by uh, this guy, Dao Jiang, Paul Kilney, and Ming Li, that very, very restricted case when all quartets, they had all the quartets, they gave a PITAS algorithm for CS student, uh, you should know what Apitas is, and this is the only or was the only result in quartets at all, okay, with quartet frequency. Um, so um, our first result when we started, remember that I spoke that since 2000, since my postdoc in 2004, I am dealing with quartets, but all this was heuristic. 
uh, pitas for any, any, not any um, end to the full um, cortex. But this is the main result. So sample max cut, uh, not max cut, maximum cortex consistency. So we sample cortex, we just draw them from an urn, okay? We sample them. And now we give them to our max cut. And it's a result we got, um, uh, the, I'll, I'll show you soon the result. And we, it was the first time to break that third, okay? It was the first time to break that third. And let me say a little bit. Oh, and in a later, in a later paper with Zafi Yusuf, um, we were able even to show PITAS, which is the most you can expect from an anti-heart problem, but we needed more information. We have here more for tests than here. So this is PITAS, and this is for um, quite dense examples. So this is our approximation from 2010 with Rafi, and it, it's some nice, nice, that's why I want to speak about it. So um, we don't want to construct all the, we don't want to construct all the data into the four cortex. We want to sample a few of them, and sampling is now everywhere in biology just everywhere, you sample reads, you sample, you, you break everything. When you have random um, environment, you sample, okay? So you sample cortex. Imagine you have 100, 100 taxa. You cannot generate on the, all the 100 to the four cortex. So you sample them and you give it to our algorithm. And that defines the sample NQC problem. It's a sub-problem. It's not any um, instance. It's a sample instance. Uniform sample. And now we construct the same quartet graph as before, and we apply the same max cut approach on that graph. Okay, so the same, the same graph, the same max cut. And there were several technicalities here, non-trivial, and with negative edges that were not, um, not considered in, in other, the minus alpha and other um, algorithms, but we could show here for the first time to break the uh, third approximation, okay? So this is um, one of our results, maybe the, maybe the most important. Like I said, we had a later um, result, even more technical, a fetus, but here um, it was also sampled, but we had we needed dense instances, like everything. Like you want coverage for your sequencing, you need dense instances in order to say something. So our PITAS is uh, for dense, in mildly dense instances of cortex. And this is some negative results regarding uh, cortex. So we were thinking the following. And this is already with with, uh, with Noga alone for Tel Aviv. So uh, the idea is, can we, by checking all or even a random sample subset of our cortex, can we infer compatibility? Can we say that this cortex again we sample from our um, our set, our ground set? Can we say something about it? Because it's because sampling is everywhere. And the negative result is the following. There are sets, ground sets, few of very small, this is almost linear, very small sets, such that every subset, every subset that is almost almost the size, almost the size of the ground set. And this, these guys, these guys are compatible, okay? The ground set are compatible. You sample and you 
Everything's okay. Okay, can we infer something about our ground set? Can we say something about our ground quartet set? Is there a tree? Because all these guys are compatible. There is a tree. You can find that tree. And still, Q is very inconsistent. The ground set is very inconsistent, meaning a third. You cannot get more than a third. Okay, so you there is no tree that gives you more than a third approximate, uh, not approximate, satisfaction. So this is quite negative uh, result. And I want to return to biology. I have how many minutes? I have this. Four minutes. Okay, so back to biology. Back to biology. So this is horizontal gene transfer. It is really everywhere. It is now like the most uh, 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 influential process in bacterial evolution that accounts for so many things like adaptation to niche and 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 uh, uh, resistance to antibiotic and 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 toxicity and. Uh, 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 a bacteria accept, absorbs one gene or a cluster of genes from another bacteria, and now the whole tree of life looks like this is how this is how the process looks one event, but the whole tree of life becomes a network. So this is the network tree of life. And what we could and actually, this also is not from CGSI, but a result from IPAM is with Sebastian Roche, okay, that says the following. Look, you have many, many gene trees. Every, every such a gene, every gene evolves differently by moving from different guys. So this is one gene tree, another gene tree, another gene tree. Every gene tree has a different history because of all these movements of the genes between, between bacteria, okay? See, and the, but, but the bacteria are the same. And the positive result says the following, that it can be shown that we can tolerate surprisingly large amount of HGT at every gene, many, many genes, many, many horizontal transfer in every, every such gene tree, and yet obtain every quartet correctly. And if we have all the quartets correct, we can reconstruct the real tree. So this is not a very um, new result, but then my student that I mentioned here, he took this result and said, hey, let's, if we have every content correct, let's construct the entire tree, the bacterial tree of life. And there he found really surprising uh, results about uh, barriers of HGT, Again, from Cortex. So I want really to, um, this is the details here that I skipped. And I, I thought I will have time to stick on this, but I, I, but which is a little bit more results that we have to, about some open conjectures that are, are again, bridge between biology and, and uh, bacterial evolution or microbial evolution. And, but let me really um, conclude here. Then superiority of max cut over mean cut, uh, MRP I didn't speak, significant advanced advancement in analytic results, crucial component in gene phylogeny, as I told you, as you just saw, that really the, the thing to overcome lots of incongruence between gene trees is to really work with quartets, and people use it now also in incomplete lineage sorting, that is an 
another term that you might have encountered here. Um, on what, <clears throat> so we now entered from one previous, so now with, with Rafi, we work on distances and partial information that is again everywhere because we don't have the exact information in biology and quartet plurality. The third barrier is, is, is a big issue. And my collaborators are Rafi Yuster. Um, this is my, my buddy from New Haifa, Satish Rao. We collaborated with Sandy Warnow at some point, that's in the beginning. Um, some students of mine here, and it's not really um, updated. And some funding, and if someone wants to do some interesting stuff in Israel, we have we have several fellowships for that for postdocs in Israel on microbial evolution, evolution in general, combinatorics. Then I'm here the entire course. Thank you very much. Okay, so his, his results on, uh, on horizontal gene transfer, do they also apply if you have uh, introgression under a model where there is a mixing between populations? Let's discuss that because maybe maybe the ideas uh, there is nothing really special with this um, horizontal gene transfer, but um, rather that the 